Greetings there. I'm coming on really quick before today's episode to just mention something that happened uh, today. I recorded this episode early in the morning and then went out in the afternoon because we had a birthday to go to um, with my daughter's classmate. And then I was going to take my daughter out to Indian food because she likes that food. And we just got back. But <clears throat> during our time out, I got a little message from the person who I was uh, referencing today, that I was recommending today, with Watchman's Journal, Diana Larkin. She didn't write me personally, it was just a pop-up on her Telegram, specifying that she had a new video out. And it was kinda, kinda cool, because it tied into today's episode. Um, not so much as she has the perfect answer for you, but it's something to possibly ponder if you're going through these particular hardships as I am with the loss of friends or anything else that you're losing at this particular time. Um, she did mention a few things called What Is My Purpose? It was a good video. It's about 17 minutes long. I gave it a listen and I thought I'd do this little intro clip uh, notation before today's episode stating that it was neat that I put out a video <clears throat> and then later today I, you know, go and check out that she did a topic pretty much relating to that sort of not really answering but just like as I do giving little buffers giving little things like hey maybe do this and this might help you out on your topic that you're going through especially with the loss of friends that I have um, because just the idea that I have of God taking them out of my life just so that someone else can come in and replace them or go through the hardships of that loss only to have a new friend come in and start all that over. For me, it's like hard pass. You know, it's, I, I'm just, I'm not interested in that. And I, I'd rather just do without. But again, am I, am I moving away from my purpose by doing that, what God is trying to have me do. And just because they're gone now, maybe in this cave dwelling season, this time of growth that we need to spend with the Lord, if we focused on them so much to the point that we're not focusing on God, it'll detour us from what we're being called to do. And it's not like they won't return in the future. This is why today's topic is called, they will catch up. There will be a unifying again. <clears throat> And hopefully we will all be reunited with those that we care about, those who we love and cherish and uh, deeply admire and are very um, appreciative of. And uh, uh, for some that I care about, uh, happy with their accomplishments. Uh, they've done such good jobs with what I've been trying to help them with and what they've been doing on their own. Uh, very impressed with them and I just hope that the unification of that returns after this season and I think it's the one trial and tribulation I have as well as I'm sure many of you have as well so as soon as you're finished here go check out Diana Larkin and, and I think that may help you out give you a little buffer on what it is we all should be doing this time which is focusing more on the Lord and not just who we want in our lives so take care and God bless Greetings and welcome to Revna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang and this is episode 5 entitled They Will Catch Up. This is a pretty heavy topic for me. Like I mentioned last time in the previous episode, um, it's going to be kind of a tough one because it involves the trial and tribulation that I personally have in this walk during this time um, that we're heading into and kind of the doubts that I have uh, surrounding it. And I'm not too sure how to even really think about it or phrase it or where to give encouragement for it, even scripturally. Because as you can see, I put pretty much the, the dots, the blank notice for scripture involving this particular topic, not just for me, but for everyone. And I think it has to do more with um, that it doesn't really 
in, in situations like this, it doesn't really matter what scripture you use. If you're this deep into this pain or this trouble or this trial that you have, it's really hard to get out of it. And I'm speaking mainly for people today that may not have the same exact scenario that I have, but for those of you who have something, whether it's your job or, you know, dealing with your finances or your children or your spouse or your church or just your friendships, everything in life that is coming at you <clears throat> and pressing in and it's getting harder and harder to see exactly the Lord come through in this particular situation. And I think I'll be discussing that today as with uh, skipping my introduction on the first video, explaining what's going to be happening during this harvest. <clears throat> my main topic of, you know, will the dead in Christ rise first? That was sort of extra, <laughs> extra biblical, I, I guess. Going outside of that, the first topic was how the last harvest is going to be coming around, how the evil and nefarious people, the world elites are trying to pretty much just either control, enslave, or kill us because they're starting to see their narrative is falling apart. And then the previous two videos I have explaining what we can do as an extra bonus to maybe help us through this time. One of them was speaking in tongues for self-edification by the Spirit, and the other one was anointing oils and how it works or how I see it may work um, <clears throat> with the pain and suffering we go through here and how an, uh, oil pretty much gets anointed um, in heaven and brought down here, how they bless it. And I, you know, I totally forgot. I skipped a... Uh, a Bible verse on my previous episode, which was Isaiah 61 3. And I'll read it now to all who mourn in Israel, I will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. And I wrote that down because that was part of the anointing thing that I was mentioning last time, where I feel like our suffering, our pain in our sacrifice of giving it to the Lord, He then takes it and makes it something beautiful and brings it down to earth. And that could be a whole litany of different things, just just a whole slew of, of different um, uh, endeavors or, or trials or tribulations or pain that you have. But I think one of them may be the blessing of anointed oil, where our ashes are turning into something beautiful for him, and it comes down back to us. And then we can use it in our own spiritual warfare and battles that we have down here. But... There's something else to that that I'm going to bring up today, which I, I feel a little off and maybe I'm misunderstood about it. Maybe I'm not reading the scriptures right or getting the analogy of what people are explaining. Um, it's, it's just not sinking in with me. And I feel it's a topic that I do need to bring up because I feel there is many of us in the same boat, especially after talking to people. Um, like when I'm listening to live stream with Julie Green or when we're doing Elijah streams, uh, I don't do it as much anymore because I, I work when Elijah streams is on. So I, I rarely get to chat with people live stream there. But when I do, a lot of them are in the same boat. We try to give each other encouragement, but it seems that there's something there that we're all struggling with and we're all fighting over. And the one that I had was this one of those that I want in uh that i hold dear to my heart the friendships that i have the relationships that i have how pretty much nobody that i know um including my own wife even though she she puts up with my videos <laughs> uh not these videos i don't know if she even watches these but the videos that i watch and i play with her and she has trouble believing it uh, she's she's a very straightforward you know pony up and get it done or just stop talking about it kind of person uh in-laws and my own parents you know my siblings my friends the, even the church i go to like n nobody nobody believes there's not one single person i know on a personal level who knows this um, there was one person i just talked to recently an old friend of mine who says oh no trust me we're very awake 
but I didn't go into detail on what it is. You know, they didn't explain it. I didn't ask. So I, I don't even know if they're in technically the same boat of realizing what's going to be happening in these coming months and what we're going to be falling into into 2024. Um, so the last three years have been very just isolation. And when I mean isolation, I mean, I was at work uh, in the insurance business for my in-laws. I was there by myself, just holding fort, answering the phone, paying the bills, stuff like that. But I had to have a lot of time on my hands. I would sit and watch, you know, Elijah streams and a bunch of prophetic words and get into the word and read it and study it. And I was there for eight hours a day, but I put everything on max speed. So I'd get as much information crammed into it as I possibly could. <laughs> So there was a lot of change, a lot of uh, new understanding of what was going on. I was, I was being prepped for the things that are coming, even if no one else would believe. And that was kind of the issue that I had. It's like, I want to tell so many people about this. But when I do, they just think of me as crazy or, you know, they, they don't believe in prophecy anymore. They don't believe in these words. They don't believe what's going to happen. They are looking straight out with their five physical senses, especially the eyes and the ears. And they're seeing what the government is doing. They're seeing what is happening around the world. And they're taking that narrative, the narrative of Satan, and using it just full blown to, to the fullest extent. They think Satan is winning. They don't believe in this last harvest season, this kingdom age. Um, which I didn't either. I, I'm not one of those people that believed in it at all until the past couple of years. I was a very pre-trib rapture kind of person. I, I mean, I still am. I still believe that we're going pre-trib. There's been some new sites that maybe it's mid-trib, but I'm, I'm still pre-tribber. But it seems there's something else that's happening before then. And I'm sorry if I'm taking heavy breaths. Again, I'm winded. There's a strain of covid going around that everyone had and i think i have it too but it's more than that it's <clears throat> i think it's this video itself <laughs> like i explained in the previous ones i've been very winded very down very pressed very exhausted very beat um just a, a shell of my former self and i think this video is going to explain a lot of it <clears throat> and why i'm just not peppy and energetic like some other people are when they're speaking in the spirit. I don't know if any of you seen Manuel Johnson. This dude is just like the energizer bunny. He's just totally excited, ranting, glorious, happy all the time. And I'm just like, this is not me. And I think it has to do with this one situation. So now that I've mentioned this uh, introduction, we should get into it first. Let's do communion for those of you who wish to do it with me. In remembrance of Jesus's sacrifice for us partaking of the body and the blood of Christ I feel like this is a <laughs> close with the was it called ASMR is that what it is the noise thing and not into that but it just it feels like it <laughs> I occasionally see videos of people this close. <clears throat> it's kind of freaky. I'm still not used to this thing in my face. <sighs> and again, I'll get into that as well, too, on an episode called... Uh, yeah, pretty much the reason for communion. Um, actually, I think that's what it's called. Sorry for the sorry for the slowness. I was kind of drifting off there, trying to think of all the titles I had. I forgot most of them. Just like the other ones, I'm sort of winging this. I don't have any notes. I don't have anything, especially today, because I don't even have Bible quotes. Because I didn't want to quote anything today. There's something else I should probably explain to many who are watching these and are Christians. He's like, why isn't he going more and more and more into verses and explaining this stuff to Christians? It's like, I'll explain that. <clears throat> First off, these videos that I'm making are more or less for people, two types. One <clears throat> are for the people 
who watch the prophets and people who watch shows like Elijah's streams and are awake to all of this. They're kind of aware to what is going on and they've already been prepped and they know what is happening and they need to get geared up. These videos are sort of honed in for those people who want a little bit extra, like the prophets say to do certain things, or there's been words on, we really should do this. We should fast on these days. We should, we should try and, you know, speak in tongues in these days. We should try and um, do some anointing in our house. And I'm trying to give explanations to some of that. Now, for other Christians who aren't aware of what's going on, and they're very milk toast, and it's just like, we just go to Sunday, and we read the Bible, and we explain it, and that's it, and then we leave, and there's no spiritual warfare going on, there's no battle going on, there's no great deception happening right now, there's no flipping of the tables that are coming, there's no prosperity, there's no kingdom age, there's, there's none of that. These videos might sound really garbled, uh, or confusing, or insane, um... And I understand that because I was in the same boat you were a couple of years ago. Uh, the second people are for people who are hearing this information and are starting to wake up to what is going on. They may not be Christian. They may be people like, I don't know, Joe Rogan, Tim Pool, people like that who are listening, not believing the narrative, seeing what is going on and saying there's something else here. There's something else that's, you know happening but we just they they just they haven't pushed that christian door open yet and if it's one thing that i've noticed with a lot of people <clears throat> who go out and evangelize especially the street preachers this happened a lot when i was living in madison wisconsin they would always go out and they would try to convert people like explaining sin <laughs> sorry with the covid sniffling and stuff uh and trying to convert people by saying, you know, this is wrong. The Bible says, and it's like, no, ho hold on. First off, a lot of these people already know what the Bible says. It's, it's not like they, they don't know. There might be a few people out there that are just completely clueless and have no idea. And go, really? I've never heard that before, you know, and they'll, they'll dive into it. But evangelism for me was not really explaining away the Bible and trying to beat them over the head with it. That's not how you do it. It's through your own actions. You need to live the Bible through you. And from that, and I've had a lot of people say this so far, is that they, they've... I, I don't like it when they say, oh, you're a very spiritual person. It's like, no, I'm not. If you knew me, I'm, I'm, I think I'm the farthest thing away from it because of just all the temptations and all the the addictions and the vices and the troubles and just the, the thoughts and, and just everything through me that I, I know I do have, but I'm trying to resist it. Um, but I'm trying to push out more of a uh, spiritual life for the people who do see me. And I think that's how you get their attention. Just clubbing them over the head with verses out on the street is they're, they're not going to pay attention to you. And it's one of the things I wanted to do with this series is give a few Bible quotes, give an understanding to those who are already aware, but for those who aren't Christian can also follow suit and start listening to this and, and going, okay, this, this, this sort of makes sense. At least from a spiritual perspective, this is starting to make sense. And hopefully from that, they will start diving into things biblically. They will start opening up the scripture. They will start reading it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Really sore throat today. Not sore throat. It's the one where you got to, you know, swallow through the nose and it's that soreness. That's what I got right now. So I'm going to be snorting a lot. Again, forgive me. Um, <clears throat> uh, where was I? Yes, uh, they'll hopefully get in that way. And I think as the videos progress, I'm going to do it in sections of five. Like this video, I, I try to read one verse, maybe two. And from there, the next five, I'll try and progress more into verses, get into depth a little more, and then the next five, I'll put in more verses. So by the time we finish this, you'll have a whole bunch of verses. Uh, people start understanding it a little bit more. They'll, they'll be, you know, slowly, you know, like pushed. I don't want to say push, that's a bad word, but just they'll, they'll be soaked into it a little bit more, easier, for those that are having trouble during this time understanding what is going on. <clears throat> and during this time of preparation that a lot of us had this... Uh, cave season, cave dwelling season, sorry, 
um, the isolation, the path setting that we have been building with the Lord during this time of paving the way, getting it ready for when it does hit the fan and people are ready, they'll see the path and they'll be able to walk down it because we've we've certain we've laid certain roads for them, um, and also pioneering, which is funny because. Uh, the scriptures I've been, I've been hearing a lot is, you know, I've been paving away in the wilderness and stuff like that. And that sounds like the pioneering trails that a lot of us have been going through. Um, and we've been prepping and leading the way into that. And of course, we're the crazy ones that should be in a padded cell until it happens. And all of a sudden, everyone's taking that trail. So that's kind of what the topic is about, I, I suppose. But it goes a little deeper than that for me, <clears throat> is the fact that how no one believes, no one wants to pay attention to any of this. I try and post some videos. Uh, there's no responses, no likes. Either they think I'm crazy or they're not watching, or if they do watch, they want nothing to do with it. Um, and these videos too, I'm not sure who's watching. Hopefully some of you from Elijah's streams are catching on to this or the various other sites, you know, like watching right on the wall or Amanda Grace, Julie Green, and all, all those other people where they can kind of, I talk to them online and say, hey, my videos are here. This might give you a little bit more in depth. <clears throat> so for those of you, who are kind of in relation, but I don't know on a personal level, you know, thank you for giving me um, uplifting like prayers and encouragement during this time of the people in my life that I do know personally and who I've lost and I have no idea if they're going to come back. And uh, I was very, like a year or two ago, man, it's been so long. It's been progressing so long this 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 uh, season. But I was very depressed in the sense that those I care about, they're just, they're, they're not waking up. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what I do. And the close-knit friendship that I had to a few, are uh, they just stopped. Like cold turkey ended. It's kind of the way I see it, <clears throat> excuse me, the way I see it is how, you know, Jesus, uh, he fed the 5,000, but then he had a couple hundred in his circle that followed him around. And then you move in closer and you had like even a, a smaller knit group of men and women like Mary Magdalene and his mother and his siblings and all that. And then you get even closer and you had the 12 disciples and the 12 disciples followed him everywhere. But then you get even closer than that, and you had what was called the inner circle between Jesus and like three others. And for, for me, my inner circle is probably maybe five people. Uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, five, I'd say five or six people. And one you can't get away with because one's, one's your spouse. She's just there regardless, <laughs> regardless of what you believe. She's just got to put up with it. Uh, or he, if, if, you know, if you're a female listening to this. Uh, another is my brother, which, uh, again, we don't talk too much, but, um, he's there from time to time and he may not believe in some of this and the rest are just friends, which for one re reason or another, uh, the Lord just decided to remove completely from my life at this time. And one of them was a, a very dear friend that I, I literally just started and it was, you know, it was, uh, it seemed to just grow kind of exponentially and then just fizzle out and die instantaneously. And there were some other things that tie into that with ailments and stuff where we couldn't speak. And I understand that, but it seems there was something more to it. It seems that God was pulling me away from these people and I didn't know why. And I was just very bummed, uh, very depressed, very just uh, worn out, exhausted, slain in the spirit because I, I didn't even have that connection to those people who I cherished insanely. And it got to the point that I was just like, Lord, I'm, I'm just, I'm just ready to go home. You know, it's like, just, just take me home. I have, I have no interest in being here anymore. I, I, I don't want to live here. Earth means nothing to me. I'm just, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Uh, the people I care about are no longer in my life. What's the point of being here? <clears throat> and it's, I personally think it had to do with a buildup season that time where I was being pulled into watching those videos and honing myself and prepping myself for what was to come. I think that if I stuck with that friendship, that it would have pulled me away 
from preparing myself for what needed to be done. And I also think that it may have also been on their situation too, where God is using them or they had to go through certain situations or trials, tribulations, pains, ailments themselves so they can grow into what they were becoming in the Lord, even though they may not be there yet. They may not even be remotely close, but everyone's timeline on them reaching and fulfilling God's work is, it's not all the same. It's not equal. It's not there on the same level that I am. It may take them years, decades to get there. <clears throat> but the separation I think needed to occur in order for this to be processed. And I think a lot of it also wasn't him, but also that of the enemy and, and the devil just trying to literally squish you on all sides as much as you can possibly be pressed to the point of giving in and throwing in the towel and just ending it. And that's kind of where I was at. And during this time of just like, Lord, I'm all I thought about almost every single day was just going down to Walmart, buying a shotgun, buying the shells and just going home and just, just ending it. Maybe not at home, but under a bridge somewhere or something. <laughs> so, um, but it was during that time where, sorry, the girls are making noise, where I heard the Lord speak that they will catch up and the will was emphasized. They will catch up. And it did give me some hope, but then I started to fall in doubt again. Well, what does that mean, catching up, Lord? Does that mean that they will catch up to the realization of everything that is going down right now? And that, you know, they, they, they will see the world for what it truly is. They'll see the enemy trying to kill and enslave us. They'll be awakened to this kingdom age. They'll finally wake up to you. Or would it be a returning that they will catch up and then the unification of that friendship will be returned? And I kind of had doubts on that because the one thing that I couldn't really see was the, there's a third person in that, in that whole calculation. And that's the person that left. And it's like, God says he'll restore it. He is, he is on par to return it. And I'm in agreement with that. But the third person or that who has lost needs to return it. They need to be in agreement with it. And I just couldn't, I couldn't see that. <clears throat> I couldn't see a returning back to the friendship that it was or something even greater than how it started because I just, I don't think it's, maybe I, I, I don't see myself as worthy enough to be in that particular friendship. And I heard other people and prophets say, well, the Lord is removing you to fill in new people in your life, you know, for the kingdom aid, where you can build with them. And, and I just... This is the one trial and tribulation that I have is I'm just, I'm listening to them and I'm going, no, no, I, I don't, I don't, I have absolutely no interest in that whatsoever. If this is God's plan, then I will do it. I will do what his calling is to help build up his kingdom and to help, you know, bring in people into the kingdom. But I'm not going to do it joyously. I'm not going to be happy because those which I cared about, those which I wanted in my life, the friendship that I wanted to have so severely is not there anymore. It's been removed out of my life. And the one thing that I wanted, the one thing I cared about is not there. Well, he's replacing it. I, I, I don't want it to be replaced. I remember there was an artist of uh, a picture of a little girl and Jesus and the girl's holding the small bear. And Jesus is like, here, give it to me. And he was hiding a bigger bear behind him. And I understood the analogy, but at the same time, I was like, that's, that's a very mean thing. It's, it's a very, it's a drawing I don't like because you're wanting to give your small bear to Jesus where he can give you the bigger bear. And it's like, so quantity is what counts. What if she doesn't want the bigger bear? What if she likes the small bear as it is? What if she cherishes that particular bear with the eye that's missing? You know, um, what if she doesn't want that big bear? She, she's like, I miss the old one that I had. I don't want this new thing because even though it's bigger and grander and fulfills its purpose of what it's supposed to do in its life for me and my calling to help build the kingdom, it's like, it's, it's not the cherished relationship that I had with the previous inner circle that is now gone on in my life.
And the only thing that I could think is that maybe, maybe this was the same bear. Like she's giving him a small, tired, worn out bear and he's fixing it up to be bigger and grander and grown into the full potential of what that, what that bear can be. <laughs> if that makes sense. Like it wasn't two separate bears. It was the same bear, but it's, it's now converted into something greater. And if that's the case, that's understandable where God is taking your pain, your sorrow, you're giving it to him. Just like with the with the anointed oil, as I mentioned before, and he's turning it into something grander. It's just one of the things that he does. It's one of the gifts that he's presenting to you. You've given it to me. You sacrificed this to me. Now I'm taking your ashes and turning it into something beautiful. And if that's the case, I can understand that. I just, I just have my own personal doubts in it because whether it's the enemy speaking to me, whether it's just personal background that I had in the past uh, of not thinking that I'm, I'm worthy of friendships that were lost and that will never be returned. I just, I can't be one that <clears throat> moves on from certain things like that. I've heard certain people say stuff like, well, you, you know, you, you, life isn't about being happy. It's about cherishing what you had or being grateful for what you had and it's like how can one be grateful for what they have if it's no longer in their life it's it's like that it's like that saying better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all it's like i i think i'd rather not have loved that's that's just me i'd rather not know the friendship that i had which was taken and removed from me only to just be back and just miserable and lonely um and there's, I've, I've seen other people try and come in recently into my life. Um, you know, they're, they're writing me on, uh, messages like on telegram and stuff like that. And I, I do have to apologize to these people because I think this last removal, this last friendship I have was pretty much the straw that broke the camel's back. And ever since then, I've just been completely apathetic. I'm like, you know what? I don't, it's since I've been married at 36. I mean, sorry, let me rephrase that. Until I was married at 36, I moved more times than I'm old. Like I've had countless friends. I've met so many people in my life from all the moving and from all the different jobs and from all the different places and from all the different schools. It's a lot of close friends that I had in the past, I don't even remember their last names anymore. It's, it's been just a flurry of people in my life. And to have that inner circle, that the ones that I've, I've tried to hold on to be removed. And the last one go this past year or so, I'm finally just like, you know what? I think I'm just done with people. I, I don't, I have no interest in meeting new friends or getting acquainted with new people on that level of friendship. You know, people are like, Hey, I, I have someone to meet you. It's like, eh, I'm not interested. You know, I, I, I don't want to go through this whole dog and pony show again. Of, well, what are your likes? What are you interested in? Hey, you want to talk about, you know, this particular topic? Do you know about the global elites? Do you know about this? You know, but, and, and it's just like, it's after a while, you just get so winded from it and so exhausted and just so beaten. I think that's where I'm at. Just <sighs> like that, just completely exhausted. And there have been a few people that have tried to contact me and, and tried to be friendly and stuff like that. And I tried to respond and be friendly to them, but I, I need to apologize to you because it's, you know, that stupid saying in relationships where the person that's breaking up says stuff like, oh, it's, it's not you, it's me, you know? Well, in this case, it really isn't you, it is me. And... Yeah, there's nothing you did wrong. There's you, you, most of you seem like really cool people, uh, and you have a lot of interesting topics and, you know, was this any other time in my history? I probably would be all about jumping onto the friendship train, but lately I just, I've had no interest in starting up any of that. I'm just keeping myself isolated, doing the home stuff with the wife and the kids. Um, and I, I feel that that might be a flaw because what if those people were the people that the Lord is trying to put into your life to help build up the kingdom? 
And I think we need to start paying attention to stuff like this, not just on the friendship level. I'm talking all of you who feel there's been a loss of something in your life. Uh, let me put it to you this way. If you listen to the prophets and you know what's coming and you see the tables returning and you stand in agreement with it, you can, you can see the tables flipping. You can see the exposure happening. You can see the governments that are, are going to be caught in their own trap. You could see the white hats and people like Trump returning. You can see them that are causing all this damage be either thrown in prison or, or killed or, you know, some even converted to Christianity. We need to pray for that. You could see the prosperity coming. You could see the wealth coming and you could see the, the kingdom age coming and, and the building and you could see all of that except this one thing that's just gotten you down. And with me, it is that friendship thing. You just can't see it happening. If there's just that one thing that you do, just it's whatever it is, whatever Bible verse you read, whatever encouragement you try to give, whatever incentives are thrown at you, what, what it doesn't matter what it is. You just, can't, you can't see it happening. I think that is our own trial and tribulation where we are failing and we are not believing in the promises of God. And we need to start focusing on that, not the loss, but what God is going to be returning into our life. And we need to start speaking into that. And we need to start believing that what he says is true. He's, I will return all. They will catch up. <laughs> Everything lost will be returned sevenfold. And I think we, we need to focus and hone in on that one thing we're having trouble with, myself included, where we need to start believing in what God says. And when that happens, we'll start seeing the turnaround come. And that is the one thing with prayers that I'm asking you for is that, um, that you pray for me during this time, uh, with the friendship issue that I have and the loss of how that alone is the one thing the enemy is using to hinder my progression in the calling of what God has me to do because I've given up on a few people so far that have been trying to meet me and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not interested. And if that's what you're trying to put in my life, Lord, I repent of that. And those who have been trying to reach out to me, uh, forgive me for just just letting it go because I'm just, I'm not there, but I will try to do what he is calling me to do. And I think we need to focus on that. And once we start doing that, we will see a faster turnaround and we'll see that of which we lost return back to us. And I hope for some of you that may have given you some encouragement. I know it's not much. I know for those of you watching Elijah streams and I've heard some of your stories, some of you have children, you know, that you love that, have, that they're just like the, the prodigal sons. And I thought I'd use a prodigal son for this particular story, but I, I thought that may be a bad analogy because the prodigal son was somebody who left the father's house and wanted nothing to do with him. Um, and realized once they got into the world that it sucks and they need to come back to the father. But the people I lost in my life, um, especially one in particular, they're already saved. Uh, they believe in Jesus and, um, you know, they, they see, uh, Christ as their Lord and savior and were baptized and all the time. I mean, they're, they're of faith. So I don't really see it as them leaving and going into the world. They want nothing to do with the world. I think this is kind of a ploy of the enemy to just a, put a hindrance or a, a wrench into the, the cog of what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> Uh, either that, or I think the Lord just gave us a time out so that we can improve ourselves. And if that's the case, hopefully he'll return them in the future. But I think we need to believe in what he says and stand firm in the faith of what he is calling us to do. And also what he says that he will do for us and for them. And again, I do hope this helps. If any of you are having your own doubts, it may not be friendship. It may be any other situation under the sun that involves this last kingdom, last king, sorry, this last harvest, this kingdom age season, um, where you're just having your own doubts and your own troubles. Uh, feel free to comment me on here 
and I'll pray for you as well too, that hopefully you will be able to overcome this temptation, this trial in your own life. Because I think we need this desperately, especially for those of us who have been in this season and been carving the path out for everyone. We're taking the most hits out of anyone. We're on the front lines right now, and we're just getting beaten to the ground and exhausted and worn out and tired. And I, again, I do hope this gives you a, a little nugget of faith and what to look forward to and believe that they will catch up. Or it will be returned to you, whatever the situation is. We just need to take God's word for it and stand strong in the faith. And hopefully be able to see the day where we would be able to embrace them as friends again. Because I just, they're not replaceable in my life. God may be putting somebody else in my life to do his kingdom work, but they're not going to replace this friend. And the only thing, the only other encouragement that I could give to you is to realize if you're in the same scenario that I am, just realize that you will always be their friend, regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances. You will always love them regardless. And that's something that can never be taken away from you, even if they don't return that. Um, but I'm going to try and have faith on the Lord on this. And I know this episode seems kind of like a downer, but I think it's one that we need to personally overcome. And I think it's one we need to stand by and help each other with because the times are going to get darker and we need to start building ourselves up. And once we put this particular trial that we have to bed, the stronger we'll become in working with God on what he is trying to do. <laughs> in the next episode, we'll go deeper into that on why it is us that are doing it, because we are kings and priests, we are ambassadors, we're soldiers, and we're the bride of Christ. And I'm going to delve into that a little bit more. And hopefully that'll give you a little bit more encouragement. And we need to focus on who we are in Christ and how we need to look to him and not just all this extra stuff. Regardless how much we do like it, we need to give it up to the Lord so that he can turn us into something grander and greater for his purpose. And hopefully they will catch up in the end. So I guess that's it for now. The next person that I'm going to bring up uh, for someone to listen to online is Diana Larkin. Um, it's called The Watchman's Journal with Diana Larkin. She's great. She gives periodical updates um, uh, on her Telegram site, little journal nuggets. And then every Tuesday, I believe, she goes through and reads all of them nuggets online on YouTube and they're great and they give massive amounts of encouragement from the Lord. She's very calm. She's very collective. She smiles a lot. She's, uh, my, my wife calls her Glenda, the good witch. <laughs> so though, don't take that, you know, in, in, in a wrong way. She's not a witch or anything. She's just, she, she is a prophetess, but it's just that her, her whole continents, you know, she's got pink everywhere and she smiles and she's just very, you know, very uplifting. And I do like her a lot. She's, has helped me in many ways. So I recommend her. And I think for this episode, I'm going to recommend, wow, my hair's messed up. Just when I look at the camera, I notice how weird I am. I just showered. Maybe that's why my hair is kind of all over the place. <laughs> Francis McNutt, a book called Healing. There's another one that I'm going to get into in episode seven with Francis McNutt called Deliverance from Evil Spirits. I'll get into this. And this one I read only once, uh, but it's really good. And it delves into a uh, obviously healing. He is a Catholic, um, but still uh, the topics of what he went through and the healings that he saw throughout his life are very good. And I highly recommend this for those who are interested in getting into the healing ministry. Episode seven will be the book that I recommend on the stuff that I'm interested in and why, as you can see in the back, I'm interested in stuff like hammer horror videos, which you think a Christian would watch hammer horror scary movies. Yeah, I would, especially Hammer Horror, and there's a reason for that, and there's a reason why, again, there's the picture of Peter Cushing as my logo, or as my picture guy at, at the beginning of the film, dressed all in Hammer Horror. In fact, he's right over there on the wall, the action figure of Peter Cushing as Van Helsing, uh, and spiritual warfare, and why I have the stake and the mallet, you know, to drive the stake through the hearts as part of my logo for a revenant. Den. it's just something I've always been interested in. It'll make more sense when I explain it on, on an episode seven, which goes into the spiritual warfare. But first we're going to be going into Kings and priests and who we are in Christ and why we have to battle 
the enemies in episode seven and their human counterparts in episode eight, which I believe is called the two presidents. So again, I'm sorry if this sort of bummed you out this episode, but I think it's a topic we all need to discuss. It's a thing we all need to recognize and come into revelation with. We need to understand why we're down, why we're depressed, what is holding us back from the Lord's calling. Hone in on that. Try and give it to the Lord as much as we possibly can, all of it, because he wants all of us. And he'll replace it with something grander. And hopefully in the end, everything will be returned back to us. And until then, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. I pray for those who are struggling just as I am, who are slain in the spirit, who are weary, who are exhausted, who are beat, who are burnt out, who just can't move anymore, yet we still try and just trek on to what you are calling us to do. And Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit give us his indwelling within us and the glory and comfort during this time for any trials and tribulations we may have personally, that we may overcome them and be able to do what you are calling us to do during this time with greater efficiency. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And again, these past five topics were all stuff that... Um, seems a little extra maybe above and beyond what you and your church do or believe in such as tongues and oil and this kingdom age and um particular ways of pray and what is coming and my advice to you is take everything up with the lord question all spirits don't believe anyone don't take my word for it ever don't believe anything i say there was a time where even I wouldn't believe anything I said. So it's been a long, interesting trail. But always take it up with the Holy Spirit. Have discernment for all things. And open up your heart and your mind to what is going on. And maybe you'll start getting, uh, you'll start getting the answers you're looking for. Um, but take it up with the Lord always. Not just what me or any of the prophets say. <laughs> and I hope that helps. And I hope I get over the sickness because it's my daughter's birthday this week. It was her birthday yesterday always birthdays and we had a party and now I'm going to take her out to some Indian food after we go to another birthday party today for one of her classmates. So it's been very busy. Uh, I hope I get over this. I hope I get over the exhaustion and I will be praying for all of you as well, including those who I deeply love and care for and hope that they return back into my life because I do miss them very much. Um, God bless all of you. And I will pray the same for you as well. Take care.